I can remember <clears throat> when I was a teenager and um, approaching the age when I could get my driver's license and thinking to myself, it was going to be easy to learn how to drive. I, I did decently in school. I was sure I could pass any test. And after all, I've been, you know, riding around in, in go-karts or, or bumper cars at the amusement park all my life long. It seemed like I got the basic handle, hands on the wheel, foot on the gas, and you go. And finding the thing I struggled the most with in learning how to actually drive a real vehicle on real roads was remembering to check all the spots that you can't see from sitting in the driver's seat. Rem remembering to check what they call your blind spots. You can obviously see ahead of you and you got your rear view mirror and your side view mirror, but I can remember having to learn intentionally. You might think everything is clear, but always make sure there's that. There are these spots that the mirrors don't give you an angle on. You can't tell what's there. You have to look, but you have to because somebody could be there, some other vehicle could be there, a pedestrian, a person, a, a car, and you don't want to wing into somebody by turning without realizing somebody's there. I had grown up, you know, thinking that driving was like the bumper cars at the amusement park, where part of the fun is you might hit somebody, but on the real road, you, you can't afford to not look in those spots. And the difficulty about having those kind of spots, those blind spots in your car and on the road, is that it's easy to forget they're there. It's easy to forget that you can't see everything and that you need either a change of perspective or somebody sitting in the seat beside you to say, hey, am I clear to merge? Is there somebody over there? Can I get over on that side? You don't realize until you're actually the one behind the wheel. You don't realize how important it is to have someone help you to see what you can't on your own. And as somebody who I will also confess has made a couple of close calls over the years when I forgot to check not just my mirrors but to physically look and check my blind spot and, and what do you know there was somebody there and I didn't realize it or I didn't notice that there was a car there. I'm grateful that I've been safe and kept alive through days when I didn't pay attention to my blind spots, and I should have. The humbling thing for me is realizing this wasn't just a lesson I had to learn when I turned 16, but that we are always constantly limited in our vision and how much of the world and how much of other people around us we see and how easy it is for us to intentionally or unintentionally put people in those places we don't notice anymore. Treat them like they're not there, like they aren't important. To treat them like they're in our blind spot and it's their problem rather than something we need to deal with. And that gives me a whole new window on why I need the Jesus who shows up late in what we call the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel. There's this scene where Jesus has been on a journey. He comes to the city of Jericho along the way. There's, there's a panhandler. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a man begging by the side of the road. And instantly, it hits me how many times in my life have I been driving down the road or at an intersection or in some city getting off on an off-ramp and there's somebody holding a sign begging for help, looking for donations, needing assistance, and how easy it has been to put them in my blind spot because I don't know what I should do for them. Should I give them money? Am I worried about whether they will spend it responsibly? Am I worried about what danger they might cause if I give them money or what good or bad consequences might have? It becomes so much easier just to pretend they're not there and to put them in my own personal blind spot, literally to like just not look at them and then to just pretend, to tell myself I don't have to think about that person, not to have to think about their needs or their situation or what brought them there. It's so much easier to put other people in our blind spots and say they don't matter, tell ourselves they aren't even there. And then we're not the villain. We just we just didn't notice. We just didn't think to check our blind spot. So there is a man who has been put in everybody else's blind spot, right? People who don't want to have to notice him. And this man happens also 
to be blind. This this man is begging because he, he can't work. He doesn't have any other way of being able to make a living for himself. His name, they call him Bartimaeus, which is just the, the Aramaic way of saying he's the son of a man named Tineus, T Timaeus. So here's this man who is crying out from the side of the road and, and somehow gets the awareness that Jesus, the traveling Messiah, is arriving and is on his way and starts shouting out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, crying out for help and recognizing in Jesus that he's more than just itinerant traveling rabbi or interesting religious figure. He's the one everybody's been waiting for. He's the Messiah. He's the son of David. And he cries out for help. Now, the, the way he asks, Jesus, have mercy on me. This is the same way you would ask for, for, for charity. This is the same way you'd ask for, for, for help, for, for money. Um, the, the, the word we translate alms, like when you give money, you know, when you give money to the panhandler, when you throw, toss a couple of coins in the bucket at the cash register, it's that same idea that this man says. So it's hard to tell. Is this guy just begging for money? Does he see something more? Is he just asking for whatever help he can get? And most everybody else, their response is simple. One more guy begging for help when he could be working or not bothering Jesus. And so much easier just to pretend he's not there. And Mark, the storyteller, says many people sternly ordered him just to be quiet. They could ignore him if they didn't look at him, but to make it clear, they just wanted him to be quiet so they wouldn't even have to hear him either. They put him in their blind spots. They refused to see him, but not Jesus. Jesus approaches them. What do you want me to do for you? And his response, he wants to be able to see. And Jesus heals him in that moment. And able to see he can go on his way again. Although he's shown himself certainly by this point to be more perceptive than even Jesus' disciples who seem awfully confused about who Jesus is and what it means that he's the Messiah. I hear a story like this and some part of me wants to tune out and go, you know, great that Jesus healed that guy, but in our day and age when, you know, you can't just count on miracles to happen when you want them and there are plenty of other uh, technological advances. We have glasses so you can see or laser surgery or other kind of treatments and, and you know, this, this, this story just doesn't apply to us anymore because I can't promise people just because you wish it that you'll get a miracle and have your eyesight healed. And on the other hand, we have other ways that getting your eyesight improved is, is, is available at your local Walmart in their optometry department. And it seems like maybe this story just doesn't apply anymore, except I can't shake the feeling that Jesus has come to heal all the places that I refuse to see. All the places where even, even, even beyond my awareness, I don't see people around me. And that Jesus has come to help me to see more truthfully and honestly. Certainly to recognize him, but also the other people I keep putting in my blind spot. It is so easy in this life to be solely focused on the things I have on my list for the day. Here's the things I need to accomplish. I need to work uh, and, and make money. I need to you know, go to the grocery. I need to get other things that are my goal in life. And to treat other people around like they aren't even there. Like the needs of our strangers. Like the hurts of our neighbors. Like they don't even count. Like they don't even matter. We're doing this all the time. We can be so laser focused on the things we think are so important in our to-do list that we are driving forward to get and to achieve. We don't realize just how many times we ignore people around us, whether, you know, panhandler is at the street corner or people half a world away or neighbors right around us who are going through struggles they don't often advertise. And it occurs to me too, just like driving on the road, you can't just look ahead, but you have to be aware of people around you. We're dangerous when we don't pay attention to the needs of people around us. And dangerous things can happen when we ignore the needs of people around us or put them in our blind spot and treat them like they don't matter. Part of what Jesus has come to do is to heal the places in me where I refuse to recognize him and where I refuse to recognize the people whom he loves who are all around. When it would have been so much easier 
for Jesus, who's very clearly directly sent on his mission to go to Jerusalem and go to the cross. It would have been so easy for Jesus to say, I can't be stopped by uh, detours or distractions, or I, who knows whether that guy deserves my help. He's just a beggar. It would be so much easier to listen to those voices, silencing Bartimaeus and telling him he doesn't matter. Jesus is more important. He's plowing on through. Jesus stops the procession. Jesus calls for him. Jesus sees him. And something miraculous, something good, something holy happens even just in the act of Jesus seeing him. That's just it. The lack of vision, the lack of sight isn't just that Bartimaeus can't see, it's that other people are willfully choosing to ignore him, to act like he doesn't matter. And Jesus stops it before he even says a word by seeing Bartimaeus as a person who's beloved of God and who is worthy of love and of attention and of compassion and of kindness. Jesus not only heals Bartimaeus' eyes so that he can see, but Jesus does something to everybody else watching this scene unfold to help heal their eyesight, to check their blind spots so that they can recognize the people they have put off by the side and treated like they don't matter. We need that in each other. We need that as the community of Jesus followers. And we need then to listen to the voices of other people around us who might see things or recognize things that I can't spot. At one level, it's just who are the people in our lives who in the name of Jesus and as fellow disciples alongside of us can call us out. And when there are things that I'm doing that are hurtful to other people or offensive or are, are frustrating or, or agitate others who can call me out and go, you know what, when you said that, that might have been upsetting to somebody else. You might, you might not have realized it, but what, what, what you just did, that really stepped on somebody else. I need those people. We need those people in our lives who can help us to see the uncomfortable realities about ourselves and help us see the people we have put off to the sides and the margins that we didn't want to have to deal with. We also then need voices that are different than our own who can particularly help us see things that I don't recognize. I need the voices of people who are different from me. People who see the world from a different perspective. I need the voices of people who live half a world away, who, who know what it's like to follow Jesus in very, very different circumstances, because I need to gain their insight and their wisdom. I need to listen from people who don't know what my experience is and people who I don't know what their experience is like. I, I, I've got a pretty narrow window on what it's like to be me. And I need to hear from people who come from different ethnic backgrounds or racial backgrounds who know what it's like to be treated differently because of the color of their skin or where they're from. I need to know what it's like to listen to people um, who, who know what it's like to have doors shut in their faces because they were different or, or they were told that, I'm sorry, there's not a place for you. I need to listen to the voices of, of women uh, who know what it's like to be a follower of Jesus in times when sometimes people are told, no, you don't have a voice, you don't have a place because of your gender. I need those other voices. Instead of being afraid of them or shying away from them, we need those people who, like Jesus, first can help us see the things we've willfully chosen to ignore, the way we put other people in danger by ignoring them, and the way we hurt ourselves by not seeing them either. This is one of those times when it seems like the story that's at first just about one miracle, about Bartimaeus being able to see, is also about Jesus doing something to, to bring beauty and life and healing to this man even before the miracle happened just by saying I see you when everybody else wanted to ignore you and how Jesus does something to everybody else in that crowd who's trying to shoo Bartimaeus away you're not important you don't matter Jesus does something to their vision as well so that maybe after that moment they don't ignore the person standing by the roadside anymore they don't ignore the problems or situations that seem too complicated they don't ignore the subjects that seem too unsettling or uncomfortable to deal with jesus brings healing not just to bartimaeus's eyes but to every way each one of us willfully and unintentionally puts other people in places where we won't notice them or see them jesus also gives us the gift of being able to see more truthfully about ourselves, the things we didn't want to admit about ourselves as well. And every time, every time we want to put somebody else in that category, sorry, I don't want to have to deal with you. I'll put you somewhere else so I don't have to think about you, deal with you, and just treat you like you don't count. Jesus has a way of stopping the procession, speaking to those people tenderly, saying, I see you, and you are important. You are worthy. You are chosen and beloved. 
and then helping us to regain our vision to see them as well. This is a challenge. This is a difficult thing for all of us at any season of life, and we need each other to do it. I'm going to have to rely on you and other people God puts in my life to help me see the things that I didn't want to have to notice. And we're going to need each other to help each other see truthfully ourselves and the world. So we invite you, be a part of that kind of conversation as we take a look at our own personal blind spots and the places that God is doing maybe restorative healing on our vision as well as what Jesus did for Bartimaeus a long time ago. See you Sunday.